about 40%, or actually a little over 40% of forklift accidents involve a tip over of the forklift. And in a large percentage of those tip over incidents, those incidents occurred because the forklift was overloaded. Safe operation of the forklift requires the operator knows the weight of the load that they're picking and the capacity of their machine. Again, that's really what uh, it's all about when it comes to not overloading your for forklift. You need to know the weight of the load that you're lifting. You need to understand the load charts or the ID plate that goes along with that machine. And then once you have that information, you just have to stay within the machine's lifting capacity. The weight of your load needs to be less than the working load limit for the machine as the machine is configured at a particular time when it's being used. Um, what I want to talk about in this video is how we know the weight of the load. Most of the time that's going to be real straightforward. Most of the time we're going to be able to find some document that tells us the weight of the load that we're lifting. In other situations, the weight of the load will be stamped or written uh, on the load itself, or there may be, maybe there will be a tag attached. Now, I come from the bridge construction industry. When we receive bridge beams on a job, each bridge beam will have a tag indicating the total weight of that particular component. And that's true also for precast concrete and a lot of other loads or a lot of other materials and objects used in the construction industry. But outside of construction, uh, you may not always be able to find the, the, the load weight that you're looking for, or even within construction. You know, this could happen in all industries that we can't find any documentation of what the load weighs. In those situations, we need to calculate an estimated weight for that load. And that's what I really want to focus on in the remainder of this video is calculating an estimated weight. And one of the tools that you'll be able to use when calculating uh, estimated weights are tables like I have here. This is a table showing the volumetric weight for various common materials. And the weights are expressed in pounds per cubic foot. Aluminum, 165 pounds per cubic foot. Steel, a lot of the objects used in industry are of steel construction. Steel weighs 490 pounds per cubic foot. Uh, you probably won't be dealing with a lot of lead, but in case you are, uh, lead is one of the denser materials. Uh, it weighs 710 pounds per cubic foot. And there are, there are a lot of different variations of this table. If you look in any rigging manual, you look at the back of a lot of safety textbooks, there's going to be a table like this that provides the volumetric weight of various materials. Again, we will use this if we need to calculate an estimated weight. And again, I want to emphasize we only calculate when we have exhausted our efforts to identify the exact weight of the load. Because what we're doing when we're calculating, it's not exact. Uh, and we're also, I recommend, and, and many other safety professionals recommend adding a, an additional safety factor to whatever we come up with as our estimated weight. And I'll show you this as we work through a couple of examples. Again, try to find the exact weight. Get on the internet, call the manufacturer, you know, you know do, the, do the legwork to find the exact weight. But at the end of the day, if you can't find the exact weight, then you can calculate an estimated weight. Uh, one situation that I ran into, just I'll use this as an example, um, most bridge jobs require demolition of the old bridge. Uh, to, demol to, to demolish an old bridge, we, we, we knock off all the concrete, we, we tear everything down to the steel substructure of the bridge, once we get to those steel girders and beams, uh, we then have to pull those off. But we don't know the weight of those steel girders and beams. The bridge may have been built 7,500 years ago, and the records uh, for that particular object are lost. Or maybe they were, they were never uh, 
uh, never stored in the first place. But it's really difficult to find the weight of a girder for a 75-year-old bridge. So we, in those situations, we have to calculate an estimated weight. You don't want to hook up your crane and start pulling on an object if you don't know what the weight is. And that goes for forklifts also. You need at least an estimated idea of what that uh, object is going to weigh. Now, in simple terms, calculating the weight of the load involves, uh, first of all, calculating the volume of the object. Calculate the volume of steel in a steel girder or the volume of water in a 55-gallon in a, uh, uh, drum of water. Here are some of the formulas that can be used to calculate volume. The uh, volume of a cube formula and the volume of a cylinder formula, those are probably going to be the most useful. Now, the other formulas that I'm providing are also formulas for cal calculating volumes of different shaped objects. Volume of a sphere, a cone, a pyramid. You may need these. You may be able to use these at some point in your career. But even if you don't use them, actually use them in the field as part of your work, these are formulas that might show up on certification exams. So, again, calculate the volume of the object. Then once we have that volume, we multiply it by the material weights like those we saw in the table in the previous slide. If we calculate uh, our volume and we find that we have 10 cubic feet of steel in the object, we take that 10 cubic foot volume and multiply that times 490 pounds per foot or per cubic foot for steel. Then we have an estimated load weight. Now, here are some other formulas. Again, it doesn't really apply to calculating uh, load weights or estimating load weights, but I'm just throwing those out there because you may see these formulas on certification exams. All right, let's go ahead and look at a simple example uh, where we calculate an estimated load weight. Uh, what is the weight of a three foot high by three foot wide bundle of eight foot Douglas fir two by fours? Assume a cubic foot of dry, clean Douglas fir weighs 34 pounds. So if we go back to that table and look at Douglas fir, we're going to find that one cubic foot of Douglas fir weighs 34 pounds. Now we have everything we need to, to estimate the weight of this bundle of, of lumber. We have the height, we have the width, and we have the length. Eight foot long uh, uh, Douglas fir 2 by 4s using the volume of a cube formula, where volume equals length times width times height. Again, our length is eight feet. Go ahead and plug that in. Our height is three feet, and our width is three feet. Uh, we multiply those three terms together. We find that we have 72 cubic feet of Douglas fir. Now we take that, that 72 cubic feet and multiply by the 34 pounds per cubic foot weight of Douglas fir and we find that our uh, bundle of Douglas fir will weigh approximately 2,448 pounds. But again, because it is an estimate and we want to be on the safe side with our calculations, I'm going to add a 10% safety factor to that 2448. And to, to add that safety factor, I take 2,448 times 0.1, which is the decimal form of 10%, 2,448 times 0.1. Then I'm going to add that to the original load weight of 2,448. And this is our safety weight, 2,692.8 pounds or, or 2,693 pounds if we want to round up. If our forklift or other lifting machine has a capacity greater than 2693, we're going to be in good shape. We should not have any issues with overloading the machine. Let's look at another example that's a little bit more involved. Again, it's, we're going to use some different formulas. It's really not that difficult, but there are just more steps involved. 
Okay, we are working with reinforced concrete pipe. What is the weight of a six foot long section of reinforced concrete pipe? The outside diameter is 40 inches. The inside diameter is 36 inches. Assume a cubic foot of reinforced concrete weighs 150 pounds. Again, if we go back to that table that I showed you previously, that is a weight commonly used for a cubic foot of reinforced concrete. But again, a uh, little more involved, really not that any more difficult than the previous example, however. First, we want to calculate the volume of the pipe using the outside diameter. The formula for volume of a cylinder is pi, r pi times radius squared times the length. And I'm using length instead of height because we have a piece of pipe laying down horizontally on the ground. Uh, if you were talking about a, an upright cylinder, it would be still be length, uh, but it more likely to be called height. But again, pi r squared times the length. Uh, go ahead and plug this in. For pi, I'm not using the entire uh, infinite number of decimal points for pi. I'm just going to go with 3.1416 for pi. Uh, for our radius, 1.67 squared. And I need to talk a little bit about this because the, the dimensions are given in inches. We're calculating cubic feet, so we need to first convert inches to feet. 40 divided by 12. Let me go ahead and get my calculator here. 40 divided by 12 equals 3.33. 3.33 is our diameter in feet, but we have to use radius in this formula. We have the diameter, we need radius. Radius is one half diameter, so divide 3.33 by 2, we end up with 1.67 for our radius. And then our length is given to us, 6 feet long sections of pipe. So when we uh, calculate the volume using the outside diameter, we end up with a volume of 52.57 cubic feet. Again, that's for the using the outside diameter. But if we just went with this number and multiplied that times 150, that's going to grossly overestimate the weight of the pipe because we got this huge void in here. We got this huge void. So to get a better estimate of the weight of the pipe, we need to calculate the volume of the hollow void using the inside diameter. Uh, it's the same formula. We're, we're still dealing with a cylinder. Uh, pi r squared times length. Pi is the same. Our radius is different. Again, we, we have a 36 inch inside diameter. 36 divided by 12 equals 3. That's our diameter. And divide that by 2. That gives us a radius of 1.5. So that's where this 1.5 is coming from. Uh, so we end up with 3.146 times 1.5 squared times the length of 6 feet. When we do that calculation, we end up with a volume of 42.41 cubic feet. That's the volume of the void in the pipe, the open area inside the pipe that has no weight. So our next step is we need to subtract the volume of the void from the volume of the pipe, from that first volume we calculated. We need to subtract 52.57, or actually, uh, sorry, let me back up. We need to subtract 42.41 from 52.57. When we do that, that gives us the volume of the concrete actually in the pipe. 10.16 cubic feet of concrete is actually uh, uh, the amount of concrete in this six foot long section. Next step, multiply the volume of the concrete times 150 pounds. 10.16 
times 150. That gives us 1524. We add the safety factor. Uh, 1524 times 0.1 plus 1524. That gives us a good, conservative, safe estimate of what that piece of pipe will weigh. All right, one other example of a situation you might encounter. Uh, you may need to calculate the weight of an odd-shaped object. It's not really a cube. It's not really a cylinder. It's not really a, a, a pyramid or a cone or any other shapes that we have a have a formula for. It's an odd shape. Uh, an example of an odd shape would be an engine block. If we needed to know the weight of the engine block, uh, we could calculate an estimate. Let me show you how, uh, or the method that's normally recommended for estimating the weight of odd shape objects. Again, assuming steel weighs 490 pounds per cubic foot, what is the weight of the engine block? Treat the engine block as a cube. And the volume of a cube is a length times width times height. Our length will be the length of the longest point on the block. This example is 32 inches. Our width will be the width of the widest point on the block, 20 inches. And that should be height. Uh, height will be the height of the highest point on the block, 17 inches. Okay, once we have those numbers, we need to convert the inches to feet. And we do that by dividing the inches by 12. When we do that, we end up with a length of 2.67 feet, a width of 1.67 feet, and a height of 1.42 feet. Again, using the the formula that allows us to calculate the volume of a cube, we end up with a volume of 6.33 cubic feet for the engine block. Take the volume of the material, multiply it by the material weight, 490 pounds per cubic foot, we end up with an estimated weight of 3,101 pounds. And that is a gross overestimate. That's at least three times what an engine block like this is going to weigh. But again, if we don't have the exact information and we want to make sure we're safe, this is, this is the option we have. And an engine block like this is going to weigh less than a thousand pounds because this engine block, it has voids. There, there's no pistons in the, in the cylinders. There's no cam. There's, there's a lot of voids within this chunk of metal. And where there's a void, that's not adding to the weight of the object. Also, when, we, when we're uh, treating the object as a cube, we're also uh, calculating the weight of air and uh, assuming that the weight of that air is the weight of the, of the object. So this is one of those situations where I'm not going to go with this number. I'm not going to be satisfied with this because I know it's a gross overestimate. I'm going to go back, do my homework, and I'm going to find out the weight of that block. On an engine block, there will be identification numbers. There will be serial numbers. You can use those serial numbers to find the exact weight of the block, if, if this were your situation. So, yeah. Main, main reason for showing this example is to show you the recommended method for dealing with odd shapes. Now, sometimes we use this method. It's going to be much closer to the weight of the object. But in this case, it's, it's not really close to the weight of the object. It's uh, the weight that we calculated is much heavier than the object is likely to weigh. All right, those are three examples of how to uh, calculate a load weight when we are not able to find uh, documentation of the exact load weight. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help. And I will see you in, in class or see you in the next video.